night, uh, we had uh, the recovery rally uh, last night. Uh, I think the total was 181. That's what I was told, I think. Uh, 181. Uh, 181 people here last night to celebrate. Uh, we had several. Uh, several people responded to the altar call for salvation and also for prayer. Uh, so it was a great, great evening. The Holy Spirit was in this room. I mean, uh, like Bear said, he's, we could have had worship. It went off the chain. Like it would have went off the chain at the end. There was so much thanksgiving in this house last night. There was people that were thankful. And uh, so we had a great time last night. Uh, it was awesome. But we do this every single year. Um, we, we call this Recovery Sunday. Uh, you guys, we're going to let Sheila talk a little bit more and I'm going to hear from some of these folks today, take some questions from you. But uh, uh, this is an opportunity for us to really stay connected and to stay um, uh, educated on what's going on. Uh, it never fails me when I get in the room with these folks and they start talking about situations that how sheltered that I am. I mean... You know, and I think I'm fairly connected to society in a sense. But, I mean, I, I get in this thing, I'm like, oh, my gosh. You know, I mean, I, I, you know, Mike, I look at Mike White back here. Mike, raise your hand. I was physically moved last week. Do you know this guy takes a bus from Charleston to Cross Lanes to be picked up to come to this church? Mm. So, I sent him a text message this week and just said, thank you for that. Because I'm going to tell you something, if there's anything that was a shot in my arm then, it was that. And, um, I, 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 again, I, I get in this place, that I think we get in our own little worlds and we forget that there are real stuff that's going on out there. Very real things and people are having some difficulties. And we know that addiction is a huge deal and our church is called to help the addict and that doesn't just mean with the rock that it, this is this is entails a lot of things so with that I'll we're going to ping this around but I'll let Sheila go ahead and and start and we got we'll, we'll kind of move on from there okay and and going into that we'll get into that here just in a second Ed. I don't even think our church realizes what an outreach that we have in our community when it comes to addiction mm. and the different things that we have. But I just wanted to say that this weekend and pretty much this month, we thought about the one more. And last night we showed the video of the one more. And what it, our whole um, rally focused on our community, our story, and our recovery. If we don't tell our stories, people don't have hope. That's what it's all about is telling our stories. Um, one of the speakers last night, Anthony Dye, we heard him last year um, on Rock Sunday. He came and shared his heart with us. And the one thing that, he, that um, he said that stuck out to me was he said it's one more step. And I think about that, and a lot of times, you know, um, doing this, it, it can get aggravating. It can get, you get heartbroken, <coughs> yeah. and you can get very discouraged at times when you've had somebody um, who's been in the program for, um, say, 11 months and then wind up leaving and going back, you know, out or um, and possibly passing away at that point in time. And just from The Rock, we've had several that have passed away just from our program. And that is the negative, that's the downside to it, and that's the heartbreaking side to it. And there's also the side, you know, you get frustrated because we're all trying to learn how to live again. This is a we wellness program or life. That's our, that's our life. Uh, it's not an I thing. Um, it's got, so it's going to take our whole community. Um, we, we often say until that one more has been changed or the opportunity to change, we all have a part to play. And that's why we played this song today because it's, it's our heart. And we don't all the time realize what role we do play or necessarily how even addiction affects our life. Because you get past the drugs and the alcohol, then we start getting to the root of the, what the problem is. The drugs and the alcohol are only a symptom they're only a solution uh, for that person at the moment, but we've got to get to the root 
of what that is. And you can jump in anytime you want to on that. But I wanted to say this is this church, this is a church up on the hill, the city of refuge. And when I first came here in 2008, I was a hurting mom. So I, w- I was just so hurting. And I can remember being here like on a work party and following Pastor Jim around because I was so hurting not knowing whether my son was going to live or die. And um, he just was there. He didn't have to preach at me. He just he just loved me and was there to talk to me and, you know, talk my way through all the hurt and the pain that I was in at that moment. Um, so I put here in my notes, it was a vision. This church was a vision given to a man who knew... Um, some of the struggles in life. And now that he's gone, it's been passed on one to Pastor Paul, who is there to, to carry that vision on one and extend that vision. Mm-hmm. And um, he's always there when I'm having a problem or to listen to me cry or to be mad <laughs> about something. Thank you. But um, so now this vision's growing. Joe, do you have something you want to say? Well, what's coming to my mind right now, you know, you talk about Pastor Paul and, you know, Pastor Jim. I didn't have the privilege of knowing Pastor Jim. But uh, you talk about this place being a refuge, uh, you know, a healing center um, for the hurt and broken, you know. And, I mean, that's us, guys, you know, rock guys, that's us, man, you know. Um, But really, it's everybody in this room, you know. Um, Everybody's got something, you know, regardless what it is. Everybody's got some hurt and pain, and, and a lot of times they don't know how to deal with it, you know. And we pray through things, but what you know, what we learn in recovery is processes of healing, you know. And you mentioned getting to the root of the issue, um, but a lot of times we carry we carry a mask, and you know, it can be hurt and anger, or it can be re, you know resentments, or um, and and that we wear this mask, and, and we we start putting walls up towards people, you know, and we need people, you know, we need each other, you know, that's what the body of Christ is for, um, um, to be open, and you know, we, we've talked about vulnerability, and that's what a lot of these meetings with the guys that we have, man, are, um, we learn to, we learn to set things on the table, we learn to, you know, get our past out, and, and put it on the table, and get the things that have hurt us, and put it on the table. Like the good meetings where we can feel flow in the room and we can sense the Holy Spirit in the room. And some of them may not even know it's the Holy Spirit, you know. It's it's when we're really getting vulnerable <clears throat> and putting some things on the table, man. And then that's where the healing starts to happen, man. We get cut open. And um, I don't know. That's what I have to say on that. You know, I think, too, is that, you know, I think, I think we have saw, just like last night, I talked to a guy that came through the door. I'd, I don't know his I don't know his name, but I saw his face here. Okay, he was only in the rock a small amount of time. I don't think he was there very long, and huh? Uh, it may have been. I don't. He but he was back here, kind of tall guy, freckled face. Um, That's Lee. Uh, and anyway, yeah. He was. Ta- he said he come up and he said, "How are you doing?" I didn't know his name, but he said, "You know," he said, "I really miss you, miss you, miss this place." He said, "But I said, well, how are you doing?" He said, uh, "Man, I am doing great." He said, I'm getting, I got my kids back. You know, he was only in the rock a short amount of time. And sometimes we see people come and go. And I know people can get very frustrated because, and you can see, or maybe some of you guys that mentor, and they, people come and people go out of people's lives. But, you know, we don't know the seeds we're planting inside of people. Right? Mm-hmm. And, and we can't be people that, again, it may take somebody, we heard it last night, we, we, it may take somebody four times through recovery before yeah. they finally get it. I don't know if you guys, have, you might want to talk about that a second. I don't know. I know Carrie and I were having a conversation the other day, and, I mean, it was just a God sent Carrie coming and, and us meeting because, you know, it does get aggravating, and I know it gets aggravating for a lot of times the mentors and things too, but the thing is um, she was talking about a, a girl that she knows that it took her 30 different times, I think. Right, Carrie? 
uh, before she actually, you know, is recovered and, and moved on with her life now. And sometimes that happens, but it's that one more. It's that one more. And what's that one more for us? What was that one more that it took for us to accept the Lord? You know, I knew I, I grew up in a Christian home, went to a Christian school. But, you know, I can remember sitting in the middle of this church, and it took my son's drug addiction mm -hmm. to actually get me to the point that I was able to accept the fact that 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 one more of listening to Pastor Jim saying God loves you and being able to accept that. Mm. And, you know, acceptance is the key. If anybody wants to look it up in the big book, it's page 417, and it's acceptance. And it talks, and, and you know, I mean, it talks that we have to accept the people, places, and things in our life right now just as they are because those are the things that affect us to get us where we are in the first place. Mm -hmm. And so it has to come with acceptance within ourselves first. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I talk to the guys about um, is the how factor. We have to be honest, we have to be open-minded, and we have to be willing mm -hmm. to accept all of this. And until somebody's ready to do that, it's kind of like hitting a brick wall. I, I mean, I don't care how much we hit Joe Young over the head, you know, <laughs> or Sheila Martin over yeah, the head. My yeah. parents did it for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a daily surrender. Daily. Exactly. Wake up with the choice to say, I surrender to you. I surrender to you today. And not only do I surrender to you, but I surrender to those things that have broken me. You know, mm -hmm. it's staying broken. Mm -hmm. I, th I think it's... Mm. I think it's staying broken. And remaining you know, teachable. Re remembering where you came from and mm -hmm. staying broken. Mm -hmm. um, and and being humble enough to, to let yourself remain broken. I don't have all the answers. You know, you, you just said it earlier. I don't have all the answers, you know. Like, no. We don't have all the answers. That's why we need God. And that's why we need community. That's why we need our church. That's why we need our stories. You know, a lot of times people look at AA or NA and things like that and go into these meetings and... Um, you know, it. we miss the fact that the reason that we continue to go back, I was in a meeting the other day that they're trying to start up in Charleston, and it's like faith-based communities getting together, and a man had was sitting there, um, and he, he has 30 years in recovery, and he said every morning at 730, he goes to an AA meeting. Well, there were several pastors around the table, which a few were here last night, by mm -hmm. the way, from this meeting, and they were like, you've got 30 years sober, but you go to an AA meeting every morning at 730, you know, they were kind of like, what's wrong with you? You know, yeah. why do you do that? But the fact is, it's remembering where he came from, going and helping somebody else at mm -hmm. that point yeah. in time. Yeah. Yeah. But so for the people here, maybe and we probably should have started this out at the beginning, but let's talk a little bit about, <clears throat> let's give it, I know the most people in this room knows what the rock is. But let's briefly, I'd like for you briefly just to go ahead and, and tell again about what The Rock is, what, you know, how okay. this connection is. Okay, um, The Rock started October 7, 2008 with just a um, support group meetings. Um, we were led to the church in 2008, and so then in by March of 2019, we started our support group meetings here every Tuesday night. And, and still do. And we still do this at 7 o'clock every Tuesday we're here. Um in May of 2013 is when The Rock opened. It was a vision that God gave me and a very close friend's ring. It's a sober living like, home. Exactly. Sober living home for men. Write your vision. Mm -hmm. Thank you for keeping me on track. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> but it's a sober living home for men, and it was just one house that we had at the time. And in October of 2018, um, through certain situations, we opened up a second home. So now we have the availability for anywhere from tw from 18 to 20 beds that we have right now in our home. And like Pastor said, we still have our meetings here every Tuesday night at 7. Um, that's and yeah. right. Oh, and and the program has grown as well. We have partnered with um, another um, agency, and we have a contract where we now have like Justin Withrow is one of our peer recovery specialists, and Joe Walker that you guys probably anybody around the Buffalo area knows Joe. They work there daily with the guys that's in the house. We have a therapist that comes to the house uh, at least twice a week. So you know we've ex we've been able to expand. Yeah. By doing that. Yeah. And if you want more information about The Rock a little bit more, we have their stuff back here in the back, and you're welcome to Is it still back there? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can pick up some pamphlets or things of that nature, and uh, 
if you want more information about that, or you can talk to Sheila. But I want to make sure everybody knows. There's a lot of new people here, so I want to make sure everybody understands what it is that we do. And this, this organization, this ministry, is as connected to this church as what it can be without actually being under. It's underneath the R501C3. Uh, they, they, they have their own 501C3, so they have their own entity, which is great. It's what we like. And, but our church gives into this, and we support. And, of course, they, they make this their home each and every week. So we, we want to say thank you so much. So, Sheila, let's talk a little bit here real quick before we go into mentorship, because I know Josh is up here and wants to talk a little bit too. He's aching. I can see it. He's moving over there. <laughs> you know, um, I think you already kind of talked about the changes, though, right? You got the, got the, new, the new house and this, that, and the other. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing I think it gets asked a lot is, at least it's been presented to me a lot, um, you know, where do they get their funding from? And, uh, you know, I want her to address that real quick, talking about, like, why she doesn't take federal funding and those type of things. Okay. Uh, for a long time, you know, when we first got started, um, you know, we did have our own 501C and things of that nature. And it became a real struggle real quickly, I'll tell you, because most people are coming to us off the streets, out of jail. Their families are pretty much finished at this point in time. And so they don't really have anyone who can back them. Sometimes they do, but sometimes they don't. We do have an entry fee, and we have a weekly fee that you have to pay to stay there. So what's happening is is we are accepting these guys um, from wherever walks of life that they are coming from, and it takes a couple weeks to get your ID, to get things going before um, they're able to even start paying their, their fees when they're there. So um, at this point in time, I came to Pastor Paul, and I was just like, you know, we're probably going to have to shut the rock down if, you know, some things don't change. And that at that point, the church um, started sponsoring, I think it was a ba one bed, and it had now has increased to a little over three beds a month that mm -hmm. the church actually sponsors mm -hmm. there for us. With that being said, that is, on that is the only sponsorship or donations that we have. Everything else comes through. We might get an annual donation from someone as a love offering or something like that, but everything else comes from these guys. They have to actually work and pay their way through the program. So it does get hard. It gets tough because we might have five or six new guys come in, and it might be a month before they start to work. So um, with that being said, we do not take federal funding right now at this point in time. Pastor Paul even was like, we've got to get a grant writer. Let's get a grant writer. The church offered to pay for a grant writer so that we could get some federal funding. Well, what has happened now, it has turned out every time we came into a grant writer, it always fell through. But what has happened now is most of the grant funding, you have to allow medication in your homes. Mm -hmm. You have to allow Suboxone to be used. So it was like the Lord was just watching over us that we did not get that grant funding because mm -hmm. we do not want to do that. That becomes often their drug of choice. So, it, you know, it just it brings a whole new uh, meaning on when that happens. So, um, and also one thing in Putnam County that we struggle with that, they may not struggle with like say in Huntington and Charleston is we don't have public transportation here. So right now we have three vans and a car that we use to transport people to meetings, to work. Um, and that's why it's been such a blessing for Justin and these guys to come on as the peer specialists because through the program that we're through, that helps us with that funding to a certain degree because they actually uh, can drive them to work. Mm -hmm. So it's been, uh, honestly, I don't know that we would be open today if it hadn't have been for that happening. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it is a struggle because we have to maintenance the vehicles. We have to uh, pay insurance every month, you know, on those vehicles where a lot of programs, they don't have that extra added yeah. on to, yeah. to survive. Yes. And, you know, again, um, you know, uh, I respect Sheila for what she does. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I, what I love about the story you know, I was in here last night, you know, and, you know, I've been, a, I don't think I, I've really thought of it like this, but last night when someone asked, I think you asked, has someone, you knew someone that died because of, or close to you, right? And I've known people. But I thought back, I said, you know what? My dad was an alcoholic. He died, he died because of addiction. And some clicked in me that moment. I'm like, this is why I have such a heart. I don't, you know, I mean, I can remember at nine years old looking at thinking in myself, I remember this like it was yesterday, I will never do my family like that. 
I remember saying that, Mommy. I remember saying that. Because I saw, and another, my, my dad, he just, he had a problem, right? And I, I, so I'm not throwing him under the bus, but uh, it was just, I, I remember saying that, you know, but I've been affected, directly affected by this. And everybody in this room has. And, uh, you know, you heard, st- last night we heard stories. Oh my gosh, right? You know what I mean? Just stories. I mean, like, you know, you think you have it bad. Just one day, just listen to somebody else. And um, so, you know, I-, I love the story because it was just a mom. It's just a mom. I'm going to say just a mom that was hurting. And the pain pushed her into purpose. Yeah. And her purpose now is she's found something that she's making a difference. And the rock ministry is making a difference. Amen. I've said before, Sheila, you call me tomorrow and said you're quitting. I would say I understand. That's what I would say. To her, I would I'd understand. But at the end of the day, right, she can't do it because she said, if I do that, then I would, you know, it, it's still there's still something on my life, still something that stirs in me. So she keeps on. And the thing is, her son's on a great path now. Right. You know, right. he's on a great path and she's still going. Yeah. It's not over. Right. She sees the need, Lord positioned her, and she's still going. Just because he's doing well now. She's not stopping. Right. It's that one more. There's one more out there that needs it. So <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about let's talk a little bit about mentorship, mm-hmm. right? Um, which is a, bit, a needful thing. And you can let Josh talk, and we can turn it over to some of these guys and let them talk too. So, so won't, won't you go ahead and talk about mentorship a little bit? You, you, know, you okay. introduce it, then he, he can. Okay. Um, Josh has been with The Rock. Josh and Margaret came to church. I can't remember how long ago it's been now four years ago, and um, a lot of times they they just happen. I mean, you know, the rock sits over here, and now we've grown so much we take up almost this whole side over here at this at this point, but, um, and I just saw Josh and Margaret there, and, and it just was laid on my heart and to walk up to him and say, hey, Josh, you know what? We have, well, I don't even think I knew your name at the time. We have meetings here on Tuesday nights. Why don't you join us? And I had no clue other than I just felt that in my you know, I know it was Holy Spirit telling me, you know, go go speak to him. And, um, you know, you guys have been coming ever since. We have Les that helps us out. We have Bob, and Dad's joined our team. He's there every Tuesday and takes care of us. And Carla cooks us a meal every Tuesday, and we have Teresa Harmon that does that. But So that's kind of mentorship. That's kind of, you know, doing something to give back. But... Um, I think we have sometimes, too, when you hear the word mentorship, that scares people a little bit because that's like, you know, that's going to require a lot of my time. That's going to require, you know, I don't know what to do as a mentor. You know, I've never mentored somebody. And, you know, we have in recovery, we have what's called sponsors, but that's totally different than a mentorship. You know, Joe and I were talking about this the other day. A sponsor is something they're going to get in an AA meeting. A mentor is something of maybe it's just a text message every day saying, hey, how are you doing? Or it's, you know, once a week going and taking them, you know, for a meal. I mean, you know, um, a lot of times, um, you know, when the families, these relationships have to be restored if they can be restored. And they don't have that right (coughs) now. So, you know, um, I think that's something that we all need. But I'm going to let Josh kind of tell you what he feels like mentorship is. Well, the, the, when I first got um, asked about being a mentor, I, um, I was completely scared to death. I, you know, who am I to be a mentor? You know, I, I was in the same boat as these guys. And then, uh, you know, I, I, um, I started doing some research about it, started looking it up, finding out what it is. I wanted to know everything about what it was about being a mentor. And, uh, and that still wasn't me. But then I heard uh, someone say that, you know, God don't qualify. He don't call to qualify. He qualifies to call. Amen. And uh, yes. so I was like, okay, God, you know, I mean, I don't know what to do. Uh, I, you know, I just go here and I pour my heart out. Um, it's not my responsibility to make sure that their hearts are full or they got it. It's my responsibility to pour my cup out. I wanted to honor God with every bit of me. I wanted to know how I can honor God with what my <laughs> life lived here on earth. And, uh, you know, some of you heard my testimony about uh, hearing the rock ministries before I even heard about it. 
Uh, I mean, it was on my heart. You know, I was ready to quit and go somewhere else. I was going to go to every church around here to find out what this rock was, why it won't leave me. And then uh, the day that we was going to leave and uh, go to every church in the United States because or the Lord was him. telling you, yeah, you kept I mean, hearing was, the rock. It kept it on my heart, in my head. Every person, every time I'd get around somebody, <laughs> it was rock, rock, rock. I even go back every now and again and, and listen to the video just to see. I'm like, man, is it really? <laughs> and then it does. You know, I mean, I, I heard the rock in so many different messages and meetings. And then uh, I was like, okay, God, you know, you, you do what you do. I, I'm here. And, uh, and then. Uh, they gave me, uh, Mikey was my first person I thought I was mentored. And uh, then he ended up getting in trouble. And then uh, more trouble and more trouble. And then I was like, well, I went to pastor. I was like, you know, am I not doing what I'm supposed to do? Am I not pouring my heart out enough? Am, am I, what am I doing wrong? And he said, you know, at the end of the day, it's not your responsibility. It's not, you, you can't make these guys do it. You can only be there to give them your point and your 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 two cents. Uh, so I, I I just wanted to do everything that I possibly could for the kingdom of God. You know, I mean, go hang out the house for a minute or two, uh, text them up, uh, go fishing, go to the meetings, be there every Tuesday, uh, be a part of their life. You know. Um, you know, I, I, there's so many people that got so many different things that they can do, uh, and we just got to do our part. Mm. So, uh, you know, I, mean, I, I, I have a passion for them. I, I have um, a story also. And to see these guys uh, come in the house, and then they leave, or they get kicked out, or they go back to jail. I mean, it was heartbreaking. It, it, was, it, was, it was wearing my heart out. It was killing me. I wanted, you know, I wanted to quit doing it. And every time I wanted to quit doing it, I hear God say, one, one more, one more. <laughs> and uh, it's, 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 it's not all of them. It's the one. If one of them, one of you guys, one of us, gets that change, that seed planted, man, what can it turn into then? You know, how many can you touch? And then you hear a parable about the apple seed, you know. I think about every one of us getting that seed Mm -hmm. It turns into a thousand millions of trees and apples. It, it just that rocks me. I mean, it, it hits right home. Amen. And uh, you know, I, I just wanted to be a part. Amen. And, and then, then I, I had to. Uh, I, I I was I was feeling crazy about it because I was like, uh, you know, who 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 could be my mentor? I, you know, I want a mentor. I you know, who who can I look up to? Uh, shoot. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I mean, shoot. So I, I you know, I, I searched around, searched around, and man, am I glad I got one. He's awesome. <laughs> and I think last night, the, the whole thing of what we thought one more was, it just took a whole different meaning when Anthony said that one more step. And I think for me, one more really, chance. One more chance. One, one more time. step. One more time. One more time. One more time. One yeah. more uh, point of impact, you know, yeah. all those things that he said because it it took on a whole new meaning for me at that because and it gave me hope, I think, again, really, because it's like we don't do everything right. We make mistakes, right. I mean, in doing this. I mean, we're, we are one of the first things that um, you have to learn is you have to stop playing God. We, we are not God, and we're going to make mistakes, right? right? I mean, we're going we're gonna to do this, but we're going to get back up, and we're going to keep trying. So practically, for the folks here in the room, practically about men, when we say mentorship, you know, people might not be able to make it to a meeting on Tuesday right. night. It may right. not, but what, what, what could it look like for folks what could it look like for folks, men in this room, um, or there could be ladies in this room, of course, there's people that come to the meetings. What does it look like practically? I know that you know Josh is here every Tuesday or some of them would be able to do that, but what else? I mean, what could you... I think practically would be um, a text message. We all have cell phones. A text message just saying, hey, how are you doing? And you may not get a response back right off the bat. It may take a little while because trust is a big issue. But you got to build you know relations. Right? You got to build relationships. You got to build that relationship. Yeah. So it's basically building that relationship. Yeah. It is um, just you know having someone feel welcome. You know, 
uh, just being sure that on Sunday morning or Wednesday night or whatever that it is that you speak to that person. Um, it may be um, a meal once a week, once a month, you know, just take them somewhere. Um, I think, like I said before, it, it does scare people a lot of times, but it doesn't, it's not something that we're saying that's going to require a whole, whole lot of your time. Yeah. Um, that's good. How about um, we invite jo Jordan? Yeah. Yep. What, what we'd like to do right now, Jordan Richmond, and he's going to come up just for a few minutes with us. And Jordan's been with us for about 11 months. He's getting ready to graduate sh soon and working his way into um, the aftercare program. And um, now he just got his driver's license back, so now he's starting to volunteer. And i just let you say a few things about Jordan. Uh, I was uh, in a pit of my own despair before I came to The Rock. Uh, I found myself living on the streets. And I was going to uh, Christ Kitchen in St. Albans every day to eat for about five months or so. And uh, Mike White just so happened to run into me. Uh, he offered me a he offered me something I couldn't refuse. You know, he just offered me a way out of it. And uh, for the first time in my life, I had an open mind, a suggestion, and open ears. And I'll tell you, God ran with that. Absolutely ran with that. It, 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 yes, that that yes. Uh, yeah. yes. It didn't. It, I didn't start believing all at once or nothing but that mustard seed of faith you know just built and built and built and uh if it wasn't for god working through the rock ministries my life wouldn't be the same my life's forever changed because of it amen 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 <clears throat> okay and then we have jordan powell and jordan's been with us for four months now um and he is in one of in our phase two. The guys have to go through different phases. Then he's in phase two right now. Just I'll take just the center, you. brother, right here. Just right here. <laughs> just some right there. there you go. Um, like Sheila said, I've been with The Rock for about four months. And before I came here, um, I was in, you know, the lowest point of my life um, with addiction. And uh, I'm from Parkersburg. And uh, my mom and my sister, you know, kept reaching out. They live in Taze Valley, and um, they knew something was going on with me, so with me, you know, stuck in my ways, I'm just, no, nah, I got this, and uh, at that point in my life, you know, I was so just far gone in the madness, and just with everything going on, you know, I wanted to, I just didn't want to live anymore, so, you know, I cried out to God, you know, and um, I feel like at that moment, not even realizing it just changed my life, you know, as far as the prayers, you know, that was people was praying for me and just everything that I wanted. I've always been a seeker, but I, in a sense, despised God for what I was doing to myself. It was it was never him. You know, he allowed that to happen for me to come back to him. So when I came down here, I was in the hospital and the nurse started talking to me about Christ and you know, I was kind of just, like, reluctant, like, okay, you know. But it was so much stuff going on, you know, the signs. And the social worker, I had asked for help. You know, she came back with these papers uh, with the Rock Ministries. And, you know, I signed the papers. And that first day, it was June 26. That first day, I came out, and we came to this church, and I heard Pastor Paul speak. And at that moment, I knew I had to give myself to Christ, you know, because it just wasn't a coincidence that all these things that was going on with me and <laughs> and just, you know, The Rock and Miss Sheila and, you know, even the guys. And, you know, I met Joe, which is my mentor, and I seen a light on him, and that just... I just knew, you know, I knew at that moment that God was real. And like I said, I gave my life to Christ and I got baptized about three weeks ago right there. And just everything's just been so <laughs> just just miraculous. And I'm thankful for that. You know, I thank God every day for for pulling me out those pits. And not only did I get saved, but I found myself. And it's not about me anymore, you know. I want to be those hands and feet for Christ and the Lord. And I want to pull people out those pits. And 
And just like I said, I thank Sheila, I thank Joe, I thank Pastor Paul for baptizing me. You know, Josh, you know, the rock, the guys, you know, these are my brothers, you know. And, and I found love, you know, and I just want to give it back now. It's awesome, man. Which one is, was it, was it you that said you wanted to go? Which one said they wanted to go to Christ's Kitchen? Was that you? I volunteered it. Yeah, you know. Jordan's been going with You know, I thought that was an interesting story last night I heard about him. Um, is that, you know, he said if it wasn't for Christ's Kitchen in St. Albans that fed me for, what did he say, five months? He said, I probably wouldn't be here today. So, you know what he said? He said, I want to go. He said, whenever I get my license, right? Is that what it was? Yeah. Uh, get my license. He said, I'm going to go and give back there because they saved my life. You know, we don't understand the small things that we do. It's making a difference. And, and this church is making a huge impact. I mean, we think about most of the time that the backpack, the backpack snacks that we give, that, we, that our church does for the middle school and the high school, I'll guarantee you there's probably a common thread. There's something, probably, the greater, not, not all the time, but a greater percentage of time, there's a common thread. There's going to be addiction somewhere attached to that. What about our new ministry, Clothe Our Kids, that we're start, we've started? Where do you think that's common thread? Do you think not most of those people, probably some way, those kids are affected by, by addiction? We have The Rock, right? We have our, the support group. How about our? How about the grief? What What about GPS? What about uh, you know with our grieving ministry that we have the, the grieving people sharing? Not all of them, but there's some people. There's an attachment again, right? I mean, what else? I mean, uh, we could. That's and that's what I had. And also, like in this church, look at the families who um, foster foster care foster care. You know, in in our family, I mean the families here. So there's a lot of situations we're helping, right, and don't realize that we're helping the community. I mean, mm -hmm. I think it was, Josh sent me, was a text yesterday or a day before yesterday? Yesterday. What did you, you say to me again? How was Can that? you believe it's been four years since I've been living for the Lord? Amen. <laughs> four years. <Woo>! What <laughs> I love about Josh is that I didn't know Josh before. So I just text back said, praise God, exclamation points. I didn't know the Joss before. I'm glad I didn't know the Joss before, Amen. but I only knew the one I know now. Amen. And, uh, good. Uh, Mark 2.17, man. Uh, God calls the sinners, not the righteous. Uh, they are so thankful. We are so thankful from where we come from. We're so low. You see God just doing these miraculous things in our lives. Uh, you get your life back. Get your family back. Get your jobs back. And you, and you go from way down to way high. I mean, it's amazing. And then that's where, you know, they want to give back. You want to continue to go out because what God has done for us is amazing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, I know Jeremy last night, he he spoke at the end, gave, just done a wonderful job, preached his heart out. Um, uh, but, you know, the one thing he shared about was what the woman with the issue of blood. And he talked about how we all have issues that's draining us. It's not just drugs. It's anything. Right? right, and we have to push past the shame. We got to push past the crowd. We got to push past our fears, in order to reach for the hem of His garment and touch the hem of His garment. And that's what we all need in this room. And I, I want, I want the guys in this church. I want you guys to know the rock guys over here. And I know we reference you guys. You guys do have a name. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. All right. And I know I don't know everybody's name, but I want you to know that you're just not the rock guys to me. And I don't think anybody in this church feels that way either. Now, I know you guys sit together, but I want, don't want you to ever walk through these doors and feel shame. I don't want you to ever walk through this door like, you know what, like you don't belong. You belong here. Because guess what? This is a place for people just like all of us. We all have the same past and that sinner. We've all found a Savior. His name is Jesus yes. in all of our lives. Amen. 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 So I don't want you guys to ever think we're singling you out. I know I sometimes say, hey, rock guys or whatever, but it's just I'm kind of clumping you all together. But you have a name, and we realize that, okay? So. And that's why this church is the city of refuge. 
It's a city refuge. You know, and, and thinking about that and what Jordan said, you know, a lot of times we get aggravated and we don't, like I said before, we don't do everything right. But, you know, and it, you have to take back and you have to reflect on what you're doing. I mean, why are you helping someone? Are you, you're helping someone. You can only plant the seed. You know, if you, there's never a seed planted, there's never going to be a harvest. It, we can't control what that person does with it. When somebody reaches out to us for help, the only thing that we can do is to be there for that person, try to guide that person in the right direction, but it, ultimately it's up to them to the decisions that they make. Yeah. And one thing that Jordan Powell said was the counselor came to him with papers from The Rock. Well, you know, in Putnam County, it's kind of this has kind of been a fight for us because we're stuck between the two major cities. Um, so as far as, you know, anything, the resources that we have here were limited, um, you know, things like that. But one thing I want to say is that counselor came to him with papers from The Rock. Well, she called me up on the phone, and she said, I think I have a really good candidate for your program. That just doesn't hardly ever happen. I mean, she doesn't hardly call us. And that information was probably given to them two or three years ago, you know, from yeah. us. And so it does matter. Everything that you do does matter. Whether that person makes that right decision right now or it might be two years down the road from now. We have one guy that still reaches out to Les sometimes that actually had to just go back and do his prison time. I don't even remember how much prison time he had to do that he Paul? was here. Was it Paul? Um, Mike um, oh, yeah. Atkins. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, yeah. you know, he, he was a hot mess there for a minute, you know, yeah. when he had to leave us and go back. And now he's uh, getting ready to graduate college. I mean, he's got his whole life turned around. But those are the things that we don't get to see every day. Right, you right. Know? But the seed was planted, and yeah. the seed was planted because of this church here. You know what I'm saying? So it takes all of us. And there's different ways that, um, you know, that everybody can um, to help. I mean, like Pastor Paul said, we were talking about that this week, and we came up with that list. It's the backpack snacks. I mean, you know, when you're doing these backpack snacks, you're not thinking – that I'm probably helping a family who at some point in time is struggling with addiction. Uh, the clothing ministry, uh, all those things, I won't repeat them again, but um, all of that, our church does have an impact. Yeah, and I think when you are faithful in your tithes and offerings in this church, it just doesn't go to take care of, you know, I, you know, you do pay for employees, and, you know, I have the great honor to be able to be here on a full-time basis, and you pay for that, and I thank you guys for that. that. Uh, but... We, you realize that, you know, when you give in your tithes and offerings in this church, that we're supporting things, things just like The Rock, mm -hmm. outreaches that's going on, giving in to ministry, helping needs that come to us. So this is a part of it. Just like the juvenile drug court. Just like the juvenile, we do. we do the juvenile mm -hmm. drug court. They come here for parties. Uh, we throw, you know, uh, Thanksgiving, we had them back here. When was it back? We had them back here. We had Thanksgiving. We had Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. We had Easter. Yeah, Easter. Last year. And, and all, we just loved on those families. Yeah, it was great. I can remember um, I, we had to do the Easter party inside, and the judge was kind of looking at me like, you are not going to get these kids to play these games. You know, that was just kind of what he was doing. And they had a ball yeah. playing those games, didn't they? Yeah, and I've been to meetings over there. They're very thankful for what we do in this church. Uh, the judge... Uh, openly uh, thanked us as a church for opening up our doors uh, to, to do this. I mean, this stuff happens. I mean, I get to see that. I know sometimes you don't, but I get to see this stuff. So it's, it's amazing. And, and we're going to get ready to land this plane, uh, but is there anybody that has any questions today? Um, Josh can take a mic down to him. Or, uh, it, if you have a question today for Sheila and about the rock or anything, we want to give you that opportunity. Hi. <laughs> um, just as a little background, I also worked in addiction recovery for about a year prior to having... Eden, and so I'm like real emotional because I remember the connection, and it's like bringing me back to the power of being involved in something so meaningful, and I guess I just want everyone to experience that, but anyway, my question for Sheila and um, 
I guess, <laughs> putting you on the spot a little bit. But from your perspective, what would you say is your greatest need as far as, because you're the sole administrator of The Rock, um, what do you wish the church knew that you needed? Um, I think at the end of the day, financially is probably one of our biggest struggles. Um, I think we that and the mentorship um, is that because when, you know, like I said earlier, when we have, um, you know, so many uh, people come in that are new and the turnover um, financially, it's just really, you know, that's, that's probably our biggest struggle, that and, um, and the mentorship. I think those were the two things that we highlighted when we talked about this because um, financially, I don't, you know, we need the community to know that we do not take grant funding. We do not have grant funding right now at this point in time. A lot of facilities have the grant funding, but with that, we can't keep God the center of what we do if yeah, we do that. Yeah, like it, it's almost compromising, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, it, it just really is. Mm -hmm. And I, d I don't personally understand it, but I mean, that's there's just there's a lot of gray areas that, that they have to match up for you to get that grant funding. And um, some of it, like in my mind, with the way I believe and the way we believe, it's, I mean, it's compromising, you know. So, you know, uh, there's ways that you can be a part. Uh, it, again, you know, we do give into this ministry as a church. But, you know, I mean, but if you, you know, if you feel in your heart that God's leading you to maybe be a monthly partner, you can do that. There's that back there on the table, right, there's that form and. You can become a monthly partner to support, to help. Maybe you'd like to adopt. I mean, I don't know. I'd adopt a, adopt a bed. I don't know how it would be. That's a way, right? So they can right. be the fuel. Fuel. We don't we don't think about the fuel cost. We don't think about the food, uh, toilet, just toiletry items, just toilet paper. That's a lot of guys, and that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> say, for a house that's full of men, we go through more toilet paper than you all can imagine. <laughs> But it is true because we just don't, you know, you don't think about that. Okay. No, he's got it. He's got it. No, Josh's got it. How much is it to sponsor a bed? Oh, okay. Thank you for asking that. Well, any type of sponsorship is possible a month. But it there the guys have a $300 entry fee when they come in, which that normally rolls back in. But for a month, it is $100 a week. So that's $400 a month at The Rock. But the thing is, usually when they're coming off the streets, they get that initial fee, and it's a month or a month and a half before they can. Re it's really safe to them for to really work, you know. I mean, for me personally, I went I went to Recovery Point first before I went to the Rock. I didn't work for six months, but I got to just work on me for six months, and then and that I started reading the Word in a bunk, in in Recovery Point, you know, but. Um, you know, then I started focusing on work when I got to The Rock, and that was even a process for me to really, you know, have initiative every day. And, you know, it, it takes a while. Um, so in, so any funding, I mean, like $25, I mean, you know, you say 400 that's a lot of money. We get that. But $25 or $10 or whatever. I mean, whatever the Lord would lay on your heart. together. Yeah, like you said, know. We're going to adopt one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I think that's that's probably a, you know, we can, we can say, again, you can pick up that information. You can talk to Sheila. If you're interested in mentorship, um, you know, um, th then that's fine. Or maybe you'd want to bring, I mean, toiletry items, you know. You'd want to bring that. You know, we have Stock the Rock. You can still bring stuff. We'll, we'll leave it up there until next Sunday. And, you know, you, if you want to just buy some toilet paper and some paper towels and just that, you put it back there, and it, that, that really does help. It's just small yeses, small things that the kingdom of God hinges on. So um, let me say this about Joe too. Joe is, uh, he works for Help West Virginia. And you want to tell them just briefly about what help, what they, what you do there? And, and Yeah, when, when I got the coaching position there, I didn't even have any credentials. And I feel like when I was at The Rock, I was in leadership there, and it was preparing me for what was next. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is preparing me for something else soon. Or maybe not soon, you know, God's time. But... Anyway, so when I, when I had the, the interview, 
um, my bosses were like, you create this how you want. And I had already been working with the guys and stuff, and they're like, you know, they mentioned mentorship. And, and so I kind of try to meet the need. I mean, there were some guys from, you know, Union Mission that I met, and, you know, we did weight training, and we did devotion before our weight training. You know, and, and you know, and that for me, because those guys love to work out, but we keep God first, mm -hmm. you know. So we get in the Word, you know, we talk about where we're at through our process, and then we train, you know, or... Um, you know, I'll go down, I, I go to Huntington, I go to uh, Charleston, um, sometimes I'll go hit the streets, you know, and that's something I want to do with the, with the guys here soon is, is uh, you know, to get hot chocolate and, or to get, um, you know, some soup or sandwiches, we make baggies and, and go out there, uh, you know, I've already got some, you know, my wife and I got some clothing stashed up in our living room like this high. Uh, that's going out probably mid-November, but we're getting a, you know some clothes together. But you're so, helping get people placed. They're yes, calling yeah, you. I'm, um, and and I use cards, so that's another thing. Like you guys, just if you if you want to help somebody, it's it's simple as giving your phone number. If you need anything, you call me. I have, there's been times I haven't heard from somebody for six to eight months. You know, Marty, you know, he called me from a hospital bed right after an overdose. I said I'll be there in an hour. You know, he came to the rock. He's doing well, you know. Um, so if people just, need you, what, what I want them to know, too, is that, like, you know, say they have family members or people, then they could call, they, you could, they could contact you and you could help, right? I mean, Absolutely, but I like, this is, this is just the way I operate, is, is it, if, the, if the person struggling is not willing to call me. Well, no, I'm just saying, say, say, say there's, you know, John is out here, and, man, they're, they're wanting help, and they don't know what to, where to reach out. They can reach out to you. Oh, absolutely, to, for, 100%. For, for yes. information, yes. those type of things, because yeah. that's what you do. And then I'm kind of like the middleman to be able to, yes. to get them into an avenue of recovery, you know, and yes. I'll, find, I'll find an opening, and, and um, yeah. you know, so that's, that's the way we do things. Or if they want 28 days... If they want uh, detox or whatever, or we could get a detox, then we come through a game plan to get them into uh, into long term treatment. We'll do that. Um, then yeah. I'll, I'll refer them to the helpline, and um, yeah. and that's, that's so. If you need this that. is Joe like in Joe Young, he, he you know he's a member of the church. Him and Joy both, but if you need help, need some information. But Sheila's also here, right? Sheila's a great. I've sent so many people her way, or hey, you need to call this lady. You need to talk to this lady. You don't need to talk to me. You need to talk to her. Uh, so anyway, um, if you guys need anything at all, make sure that you, you reach out. Amen. One last thing I'd like to say, too. Jeremy made this point last night about his mom being a praying mama. And what did she say? Stop him now? Is God that stop him. God stop him. Okay. And, and the thing is, too, like if you, like what Pastor Paul was saying, you know, all families are touched by it. If the person that you are praying for is not in recovery, one of the best ways that you can get help for yourself, because God gave me the scripture, Micah 7, 8, though I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be my light. And um, I was in a dark place. And so if you're in that dark place, one of the best places you can come is a Tuesday night meeting. To Tuesday night meeting. Group. Because although that person may not be ready, we can stand in the gap. This is spiritual warfare. So that was Amen. the best place for me to be was surrounding myself around these guys so that I knew what to expect. I knew how to help, and I knew what to do. Amen. Amen. All right, you got hearts and minds free? Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Walt? What are the requirements for being a mentor? Okay, okay so the question is, what, what are the requirements to be a mentor? Because it's ironic that you would do this today, and it's my birthday, and... 30 years clean from alcohol, drugs, crack, and everything. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, there, back on the rock table, there is a mentor brochure, and it has all everything in there that would be required for you to do that. Yeah. It's all right. I just wanted to, and I haven't really talked to she. We talked about this, but um, I wanted to encourage you all to think outside the box in ways that you can help them. 
Um, maybe you're not financially in a place that you can donate money or you don't necessarily have the time to, you know, go teach a devotion or whatever. But I know, and I know I'm kind of new here, but from what I, what I see, there's a lot of business professionals in this room, um, people that are retired from maybe education or things like that. So think um, outside the box and just a few things that I wrote down as they were talking um, like retirees, I think of the people that drive the shuttle vans at the um, mm. car dealerships and things. Maybe there's some retirees in the room that would volunteer a day a week or a day a month to help them drive people to work. Um, you know, adopt a rock. I said I called it adopt a rock. I don't know. <laughs> it's the marketing <laughs> in me. But um, kind of going along with the mentorship. Um, business professionals that may have some extra time. There may be some HR managers in the room that could help with like inter interviewing skills, preparing people for, um, you know, the workforce because, and I don't mean to generalize, but from my experience, a lot mm. of the people don't have the proper training um, to, to do the job, much less interview for the job. A lot of the people that I worked with have never, I mean, adults, we're talking about adults, have never actually had a legitimate job in their life. Mm -hmm. um, so preparing them for the job field. Um, parenting classes, maybe you have um, you know, some sort of, maybe you have a lots of kids. <laughs> or uh, formal training on you know, early childhood development. Um, uh, retired teachers or even active teachers doing uh, tutoring. A lot of people need their GEDs or even you know, higher mm -hmm. education. Uh, cooking classes. I know there's a lot of good cooks in here, and I, don't don't just assume because they're men that they don't need to know how to cook, because that's just uh, <laughs> that's just a good skill to have. Um, I think that's all I have. But just I, I just encourage you to think outside the box. Everybody has skills in this room. Um, you've been trained professionally, and not necessarily just for your job. Amen. You know, I think that's kind of you know too, is that. That's the vision of this church. This church would be used 24 hours a day. Amen. Seven days a week. I don't know how that works, but at least every day that this church would be used to train and equip. That's what we're called to do. We're a training and equipping facility. It's what we do here. And it's just not just even for folks going through addiction. It's for anything. You know, hey, man, some people need to learn how to cook. I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to go that route right now because I don't want to put her out of a job. But anyway... <laughs> No, but it's true, right? I mean, people need to be taught skills, taught finances. And we, yeah, we take for granted. One thing that one big problem we have is getting somebody an ID. Do you know how difficult it is? Mm -hmm. We were talking about just not people who are on addiction, but the homeless population, anything. We're just people just coming out of prison or anything. To get an ID, you have to have a Social Security card. To have a Social Security card, you have to have an ID. So there's a process. Well, that's very hard. We've been talking this. to senators also. Mm -hmm. It's very hard in this state. We actually are setting people up for failure because they get out, and it's so hard for them to get over hurdles. They make it almost like it's difficult. Well, I mean, like, like it's almost impossible. And we might have certain Services, but people can't have the services because an ID now costs anywhere from thirty dollars to fifty-five dollars just to get an ID. Well, if you're just coming out of prison, yeah. if you're living on the streets, we say, why do we have such a homeless population? Well, they don't have the money yeah. or the resources to go get yeah. an ID or yeah. to use the housing that's available, anything like that. So, you know, it's one thing. It's just kind of like you know, Jesus spent thirty-three years here on the earth to teach people, mm -hmm. to teach us, right, how yeah. to live. And so we can pray for people and we can do this, but we have to be the hands and feet. We have to teach people, not just the addiction, but maybe Amen. they do become addicted because they just throw their hands up and say, well, you know, this is my only, this is my solution for today. Yeah. So there's a lot of needs, guys, and uh, we're going to close it out today. We, we, uh, we thank you so much for allowing us to, to go a little longer today. And, uh, we thank you guys. Let's give The Rock and let's give him by a hand clap. We thank you guys. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for the opportunity tonight, sir, or today, sir, to be able to come on this Sunday to be able to, uh, uh, to hear more, Lord, the heart of, of uh, the community, God, as we, uh, we know the addiction, uh, the, uh, the addiction epidemic uh, that's going on across this 
uh, this, this community and across this county and nation, this state. We know, Lord, we're well aware of it. I pray, God, that we would be people, Lord God, that would have uh, compassion, that we would, Lord God, uh, not that we want to be taken advantage of, God, but at the end of the day, Lord, we want to have compassion. We want to be people, Lord God, that are reaching out and giving people a one more chance, one more shot. And Lord, I thank you for that. So right now, I'm asking God that you meet every need of the rock. I'm praying, God, just like they said, Lord God, creative ways to meet needs, practical ways to meet needs. Lord God, I thank you so much for Sheila and the vision that she has, God. And Lord, as a church, we get behind that vision. We support that vision. Just like we would support Haiti, God, we support, Lord God, what's going on right now in our Jerusalem making practical differences, God, right here. So we thank you for it. So right now, God, I bless them. I bless the men of the, that's, that's here, that's coming, and will continue to come over the next year, Lord. I'm believing, God, for lives changed, hearts changed, people, Lord God, to be affected by the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Word of God, and their lives to be changed and wrecked forever, God, and they'll run after you and be addicted to you, Jesus, be addicted to you. So we thank you for it now. We bless now. We thank you so much for everything that you are doing. And uh, Lord, we look forward, God, to the great testimonies that we will hear. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.